Today I'll be pulling a move that I call the reverse Hemingway. One thing that my animatronic costume was lacking for the longest time was this chunky baller arm armor that Farah has and it's about time we fix this. I'm gonna be using EVA foam uh, that we all know and love and some 3D printed components and I've recently discovered a really cool way of developing very precise patterns for EVA foam and I can't wait to share that technique with you but of course everything begins with some good old paper mockups. Don't be afraid to do a few iterations as often you need to adapt the proportions unless you're built exactly like the character. I'm using a Dremel to remove some material so the foam could be bent at a sharper angle. And adding glue in the grooves helps it keep its shape. The left arm has a rocket on top of it and it's quite detailed so I will be 3D printing it. I modeled it out to fit the proportions of the foam base. For easier painting I broke it down into parts and this is the bottom of the rocket holder. When combining different materials you really need to think about flexibility. Um, I'm decorating a forearm so it doesn't really matter here but if you're adding stuff to an elbow or a knee you need to remember that it might really alter the way the armor flexes so keep that in mind. Something that turns good foam work into great foam work is well hidden seams. Here I'm using watered down foam clay and fingers to fill out any gaps or cracks. I actually modeled the black overlapping part in Fusion 360 as a series of sheet metal shapes. By designing it as if it's sheet metal, it is possible to use the software to unfold these pieces into printable patterns. And since Fusion 360 is meant for proper engineering, these patterns have bend radius allowances and are as precise as a pattern can be. So I followed the patterns and made the pieces as crisp and square as possible before gluing them together. Even though I didn't align them perfectly, with some sanding I managed to even them out quite well. To make this recessed slot for the wing I trace out a pattern but I don't cut it out all the way. I dial in the final angle and distance with a Dremel. I use a very smooth sandpaper bit and a lot of patience to make it nice and smooth. Where possible I always recommend to make parts removable or at least somewhat modular. Um, this elbow wing is way easier to sand and paint when it can be taken off so if you're building something keep in mind that you will be probably painting it too. Another pass with some foam clay and thousand grit sandpaper. Meanwhile, the bakery was churning out some cookies for us, uh, running at full capacity. The rocket part was not the only thing that I needed. This letter H looking thing will be working kinda like a zipper. It will be glued, but only to one side, letting the foam armor open up when needed. It's important to use hot air to seal the foam. It smooths out the sanded surfaces and also makes them less porous for priming. I prime it by using watered down flex bond. I diluted it to almost like milk level. Um, it takes more coats, but it prevents visible brush strokes. The right arm design is quite different from the left, which kind of sucks because it had to be modeled from scratch. I also use the same Fusion 360 sheet metal technique to get all the edges and surfaces right. There's a lot of limitations to this approach, but it seemed to work for such a bulky, edgy armor. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a breakdown of that process. Uh, I just don't know how many of you are interested in Fusion 360. I tried my best aligning those pieces, but it still took some slight sanding to make it completely seamless. And of course, I patched up the inner and outer seams with some foam clay. When you're sanding foam clay, you gotta be really careful with it, uh, or else it will just fall apart in chunks like a leather jacket from Wish or something. Um, you should use at least 1000 grit sandpaper. Now this vent right here, it's actually a few 3D printed pieces. Again, printed separately for easier sanding and painting. The positive thing about gluing stuff to foam is that it's squishy, so if your part is not exactly perfectly fitted, if you squish it down, the glue will keep it in place still. But, of course, for a true seamless fit, I still add some diluted foam clay. Now it's the same deal with the elbow fin on this side too. Sand, glue, and seal. The closure on this armor is basically the same like on the left one, but instead of having a single plastic filler, there's two. Both of them are glued to the same side, so when needed, they let the armor spread open. Also be extra careful when heat sealing foam clay. Um, if you get it too hot, it will bubble up and you'll need to redo it. As for the paint, this armor needed to match the rest of the outfit, so I painted it the same way. A uh, matte black base and the uh, gunmetal metallic dusted on lightly. And of course some other colors when needed. After I painted the rocket, I just glued the pieces together with some super glue. Uh, but it is fastened to the holder with some M3 bolts. I figured in case I need to remove it for transport or something, it was a good idea. And you can really see the glossy top coat on it. Now the sticker, even though it looks quite clear on the model, it wasn't good enough to print, so it had to be redone by hand. 
then I printed it out on some glossy vinyl and placed it on the right spot. The finishing touches are almost always hardest to make. Um, it feels so bad to mess up a nice clean paint job, but with some oil, dirt and rust it will just look more believable, so I guess it's okay. I started off with this much and I can always add a little bit more if the surface still seems kind of boring to look at from afar. Then I got some chrome paint and added some highlights, mostly the high spots where there would be the most paint chipping. This chipped paint effect and uh, especially like with the oil stains and everything, it just makes it look so much more believable and I really like it. I think these armors turned out really great. They're nice and lightweight because they're made of foam. Um, they have plenty of nice details and I think I maintained the level of quality that is consistent with the rest of the outfit so it matches really well too. And I'm also super happy with the seamless closures. Usually in cosplay you would have a zipper or a velcro down the middle and it would leave a gap, but with this it's nice and sleek. I hope you liked seeing me build something a little bit more simple this time. Um, actually, it was quite nice for me to not spend weeks and months prototyping and failing in the workshop before I have something wearable. So yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you thought about today's video and maybe some suggestions for future videos or questions if I left something out. Uh, you know, some feedback would be nice. And of course, if you want some more wholesome workshop content coming your way, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It would show me that you care and appreciate what I do here. So yes, do that. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs> wow, what a great video, I agree. If you would like to see more of my stuff, I made a lot of videos over the years. So here's a few links for you to click on. Ooh, editing, editing, editing. <laughs>